All right, well, what you're about to see was supposed to be a Fight, Laugh, Feast cl Network Club members exclusive, and it actually has been for the last year. I looked at my notes, and it's been up there for about a year. I recorded it about a year ago. And it was a response to this article by Jared C. Wilson on the For the Church blog, which is a blog I used to write for before I got memory hold. So I got that going for me. Uh, it's called Jerks for Jesus. And it's one of these, you know, anti-social justice meanness articles by Big Eva. And they actually just retweeted it today. The Gospel Coalition, even though it wasn't a Gospel Coalition article, is sharing this today about three hours ago. And if you looked, Tim Challies uh, released an article about how to deal with people on social media as well. And if you remember, Matt Smethurst was commenting about social media the other day, and, and this seems to be a drumbeat in Big Eva right now. They are trying their darndest to stop the bleeding, I think. Uh, they're getting their teeth kicked in on social media, no question about it. And so they want to switch the game up. They want to make it seem illegitimate somehow. And I've got a lot of content about this exact thing. If you want to look at some of my previous content, I did a biblical theology on internet trolling and things of that nature. I talk about this quite often because this is a topic I've thought a lot about. Um, but I've decided to remove this from the members only section of Fight, Laugh, Feast, and I want to make it available to the public because I think this is a very helpful article. I, I, like I said, I did it a year ago. It's just as helpful today. Plus, they're resurrecting their uh, article, so I'm going to resurrect my video. Um, if you like it, please share it, please comment on it, and, uh, and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well, and I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoy this. What it does mean, though, is I need to put some new exclusive club content into the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network Club to replace this one. So, anyway, I hope you find this video helpful. God bless you. Well, welcome to A.D. Robles and his first members only content for the fight laugh feast network welcome i hope you enjoy it i'm excited about it i hope you are as well uh and so we'll see i don't know how much content i'm going to put in the uh, members only section but uh hopefully it'll be m more than this <laughs> but uh anyway what i'm going to do is i'm going to read you a tweet that i tweeted out last week at some point it was right after the founders ministry trailer dropped uh and if you don't remember i'm in strong support of the original cut <laughs> of the trailer. But anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, a, a quick topic that, you know, I've thought a lot about this. This is something that uh, I've thought a lot about in the last year or so. I've been forced to. I mean, I'm, gl I'm glad I've been forced to, but I've been forced to really consider what I do online and, and how I do it and the strategies that I use in order to fight what I think is a very dangerous movement within Reformed Christianity. Um, and so here's the tweet. I, I said this again. This is about the Founders Ministry trailer. And this is after I saw the response to it, all of the people clutching their pearls about how they were, they were so troubled by it and stuff like that. And so this is my tweet. I said this. Today's message to the elites and evangelical intelligentsia is clear. We don't play by your rules anymore. Your rules sound pious and virtuous, but they aren't. You have allowed this mess to occur under your noses, and some men aren't going to stand by and continue to let that happen. We aren't going along with it anymore, and that's that. Frankly, we love Christ and his church too much to allow this to go on the way it has been. Enough is enough. We don't play by your rules anymore. And a lot of people understood exactly what I was talking about, um, but some people didn't. And I think that's fair because I was I was being kind of uh, vague and I wasn't intentionally being vague, but uh, it, it was just sort of a summary statement uh, that I wanted to make. And so what I wanted to do in this video is give you an example of what kind of rules I was talking about. I actually gave a few examples in a video shortly after that. Um, so if you want to look up on my YouTube channel, uh, I think it's called We Don't Play By Your Rules Anymore, something like that. But um, here is a perfect example. This is an article on the For the Church blog, which is a blog that's put out by Midwestern uh, Theological Seminary. Midwestern, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, it's a Southern Baptist seminary. It's one of the better ones. <laughs> okay, so I'm not, I don't have any shade to throw their way. They are kind of woke, but they're not as woke as some of the other ones. And so I, I have nothing against the seminary, nothing at all. Um, but this is an article that I think is not that helpful. It's not terrible, though. So I don't want you to hear, hear me say that there's no good advice in this article. There is actually good advice in this article, but it's imbalanced. And I think that, 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 
it tries to set up a code, it tries to set up a standard by which it says Christians ought to live by that is not a biblical standard. I don't think that it's uh, it, it, it's akin to what the Pharisees were trying to do. They were setting up their own version of righteousness uh, and holding people to that standard when that's a it's not a biblical standard at all. It, it of course draws from biblical passages, of course, but this is what I'm talking about when I say I don't play by your rules anymore, or rather I said we don't play by your rules anymore. We don't want your you know your 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 kudos, your your pats in the back. We don't want your speaking positions. We don't want to be held by these rules because these rules not only do they not work, but they're not biblical. They sound pious, but they're not pious. They sound virtuous, but they're not virtuous. In many ways, they're used as an excuse to be cowardly. And so, um, full disclosure, I know Jared Wilson, the author of this article, personally. I think, I don't know this, so I'm not going to accuse him of this, I think he had me in mind <laughs> when he wrote this article. We'll see. Anyway, so here's the Jerks for Jesus article. Why the temple cleansing, etc., isn't your permission to always be fighting? Okay, here we go. I, I also, I especially like this this picture chosen for us. He's probably a white supremacist. He's probably in the KKK. Look at him, how angry he is. <laughs> very, very tastefully done. I like it. Okay, here's what he says. He says it's becoming a common trope on social media. Certain figures who spend an inordinate amount of time arguing picking fights, insulting other Christians, or mocking them with scathing sarcasm or silly memes when reprimanded, citing the biblical prophets, Paul's harsh words for heretics, or even Jesus' cleansing of the temple as a defense for constant platform pugilism. Now, I went to public school, so I didn't know what pugilism meant. I looked it up. It means like a boxing match. Okay. He says, they are contending for the faith, they claim. Perhaps the motives are good in these endeavors, and I'm sure for some they are. But I don't think I'm alone in thinking the fruit is not. The spirit is not. Because certainly the Bible says at least as much, if not more, about speaking in the truth in love, not tearing down, and letting our speech be gracious, as it does for, quote, letting people have it. In any event, what are we to make of the biblical support for this kind of online behavior? Now, let's just stop right there, okay? This is so interesting to me. This is so interesting to me because this is, in my opinion, an example of attempting to pit the Bible against itself. So it's clear he doesn't like people being what he would call jerks online, letting people have it. And what he says is the Bible says just as much, if not more, about being nice, essentially, is, is what he's saying. I'm, putting, I'm not quoting him, but that's what he's saying. He's saying the Bible says just as much about being nice, maybe more about being nice, than it does about letting people have it. So but the, the problem, though, is <laughs> it says both. <laughs> it says both. We ought to be kind. We ought to speak the truth in love. And we also not tear down. But we also need to let people have it. And so we need to account for both. You can't pit the Bible against itself. So this really isn't, I mean, he's setting this up as an argument against being, quote, a jerk for Jesus. But even in the first paragraph, it's like, well, but obviously the Bible does say that you can let people have it at times. And so I, I'm just, I, I want to accept everything he says in this article. So you just accept it at face value He's got a problem because the article kind of makes itself irrelevant because what he's going to say is you shouldn't be a jerk for Jesus, but what he just got done saying is the Bible does talk about letting people have it at times. And Jared is 100% right. It definitely does. And the, ver the, the, the things that he's quoted are that. The prophets let people have it. Jesus let people have it. Paul let people have it. Every every faithful minister in the Bible, not every, that's an exaggeration, but most faithful ministers in the Bible had situations, had occasions, had people that they let have it, and you need to account for that. Okay, let's go on. And again, we're going to try to take everything at face value and see if it holds water. I think that the first paragraph, the second paragraph rather, makes it not hold the water already. <laughs> but anyway, here we go. Number one, the prophets wept and pleaded too. This is something missing in far too many of the online prophets. Tears. 
Setting aside the fact that the biblical vocation of God's anointed messengers isn't really a one-to-one correlation with self-appointed pundits on Twitter, we can certainly learn from them and many other places in Scripture. That there is certainly a place within the church for pastoral rebuke, prophetic witness, and courageous calls to repentance. But this is only one aspect of prophetic ministry. The guy spending all day, every day, looking for people to fisk, mock, or otherwise use for his own promotion and praise isn't echoing biblical prophetic ministry. If anything, he is more like the pharisaical enterprise of nitpicking, condemning, and laying traps to catch people in alleged errors or missteps. Where are the tears, brothers and sisters? Where's the pleading for the objects of your scorn? We know you're angry and have the firmest of your convictions. What we'd love to see is a softened heart for people, including people who are ostensibly your brothers. Now, this is what I mean when I say that this article by Jared C. Wilson is not terrible. I think he's right. I think he's right. Not in the sense that I, that I think that this is missing from online prophets, but what I but what I, what he's right about is that prophets did do this. Pl- people prophets pled with people. They you know they they pled with tears. They were anguished for people, and the reality is again I think he wrote this article with it, at least partially with me in mind. I can't prove that of course, but um, but I think he did, and the reality is that I've number of times have been close to tears. My voice has cracked on my YouTube channel. I've, I've pleaded with people. I've begged people. I've been nice. I've been angry. I've been direct. I've been, you know, softly spoken. I've done all of these things. But the thing about YouTube and the thing about your online presence that I think people need to, re- to recognize, and, 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 and honestly, you know, for Jared in particular, like he's been online for a long time, so he knows this. You get to, you get to curate your online presence presence, right? It's not real all the time. Because if it was real, you would see me losing my temper with my kids online. You actually maybe have seen that in a video before. <laughs> but, you, but you can edit your videos, right? And so there have been times, let me just be honest with you guys, there have been times when I'm talking about um, black and brown brothers and sisters in Christ who I think are on a dangerous path, who I think are, 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 are lost and, and, and need to be found kind of thing, where I do tear up. And and the reality is that that like I edit it out a lot of times because it's it, it, it's it, it's distracting and it's not useful and it, it, I I start tripping over my words and I have to stop and I edit it out because it's not you know what I want the video to be about. I don't edit all the times when my voice cracks out, but many of them I do. So so the reality is when you see somebody online like like honestly, I really want you to understand this. And I'm going to use an example, everyone's favorite enemy, Jordan Hall, right? Jordan Hall of Pulpit and Pen. Look, I know that there are legitimate sounding criticisms of Jordan Hall. No question about it. But if you pretend for one minute that Jordan is this one dimensional villain and everything he does is just villainous and he doesn't, he never, he never pleads with people. He never cries. He never has emotions. He doesn't do these things and, and, and he's just one dimensional. He's a villain. If that's your view of Jordan Hall, I, I, I urge you to remember what you present online. Do you present all aspects of your character online or do you curate it? Now, we might say, well, he shouldn't curate it the way he does. Okay, fine. That's a debate you can have. But let's stop pretending like Jordan Hall, a pastor, isn't pastoral with his flock. Do you think that if Jordan Hall was vicious with his own flock, that people would stay there with him? I suppose possibly. But I think there's a better chance that he's pretty pastoral as a pastor. I mean, look, I don't know Jordan very well. We've talked um, in a com box a couple times. I don't, I, I, I've never spoken to him on the phone. I don't know him, so I don't know everything about him. But, but the reality is, like, you're fooling yourself if you're saying, well, this guy who has this YouTube channel online, that's just who he is. There he is. He, that's all he never, he never pleads. He doesn't care about people. See, that's such a false view of people. Anytime you get this one-dimensional view of someone in your mind, like I say the same thing about Trump. When you start to think of Trump in one dimension, he's Hitler. Chances are you're lying to yourself. Trump is not a one-dimensional person. Neither is Jordan Hall. Neither am I. Neither is Jared. And that's just not how it works. The other thing about this, 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 this one too is 
you can see uh, just sort of the, this is not a fair article. What he says is the guy spending all day, every day looking for people to fisk, mock, or otherwise use for his own promotion and praise. He's not doing it because he believes in it. Nope. He's doing it for his own promotion and praise. That's just, it's just not fair at all. This is just not a fair way to view people. It's, it's not, it's just, it's just, this is, this is slander is really what it is. It's, it's slander. Now, he doesn't use people's names, but it's still slander. You could still slander someone anonymously. It's possible to do that. Anyway, and by the way, that's why I use names, because I want you to know who I'm talking about, so that way you can verify what I'm saying. Am I lying about them, or am I telling the truth? That's why I use names, and I think everyone should use names. Okay, here's number two. Paul was not a Christian insult comic. Oh, before I move on, this is why, I, I, so I don't, I don't play by this rule. I don't play by this rule that you have to have a certain percentage of crying videos, a certain percentage of pleading videos, a certain percentage of angry videos. That's not, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's an unbiblical standard. It's not a standard that any of the prophets met. It's not a standard that Jesus met. He didn't have a certain percentage. What he did do is though he did, he did reserve his, mo- um, his mockery and his rebukes for a certain class of people. It was usually the leadership. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an example I like to follow. So anyway, let's go on. Number two, Paul was not a Christian insult comic. Like the Old Testament prophets before him, Paul issued more than a few harsh words for both brethren and heathen alike. Okay, full stop. Exactly. (laughs) And so what you've just said isn't a good defense. You just cite it as a defense of having a ministry where you mock and rebuke and have harsh words for people. So again, if I'm taking you at your word, what is the problem for being a, quote, jerk for Jesus? How was Paul not uh, open to the same uh, the same criticism? Could not have someone in Paul's time said, "Paul, I mean, you're you're really being a jerk when you told us to cut our balls off." Like, could not have someone said that. <laughs> and but and if, and if if they couldn't have, why not? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, this is just not very helpful. It's not very balanced. It doesn't do the work that he's hoping for this article to do. Anyway, let's continue. He's telling Judaizers to emasculate themselves. Excuse me. He's in Peter's face. He's not shy about actually contending for the faith, and it's a key facet of his apostolic ministry. And yet, to take these instances as a defense for an entire online disposition of harshness misses Paul by a very long shot. The general tone of Paul's ministry to the lost and to the church was one of gentle, loving, fatherly shepherding. It was evident that he cared about those he interacted with, and the harsh rebukes were exclamatory interludes in the normal course of his ministry, not the other way around. So until we find an entire letter that's one of ex... ex, I I went to public school. I don't understand that word. And sarcastic directive after one another. No, your steady stream of insults, making fun of all the other Christians who are getting it wrong, isn't Pauline, not even in the slightest. Um, Again... I, I, this is this is taking this one dimensional view of people online and saying, well, that's it. If you look at my videos again, I, I, I know this looks like a defense of myself and it sort of is. I, I don't have a problem defending myself. Um, some of my videos have harsh words. Some of my vi- videos have direct mockery. There's no question about that. And some of my videos don't. Some of my videos are pleading. Some of my videos are teaching. Some of my videos are patient. Some of my videos are calm. It's a mix, just like Paul. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that if you were honest with yourself, a lot of the ministries that you would say are jerks for Jesus are like this as well. It's not just all one thing, usually. Okay, and I'd be open to hearing examples of the kind of things that he's talking about where it's inappropriate. I'm open to hearing that. It's, it's not a problem for me, but... What I'm saying is that um, the fact that Paul insulted people, the fact that Jesus insulted people means that in order to be following the example of Christ, there are certain situations, there are certain times and certain people that we should insult and mock. If and, and, and let me just turn this back around on the person who would make these arguments. So this, this article is about jerks for Jesus, right? And I'm going to say this. Look. You, you don't think we should be jerks all the time? Granted, I agree. We shouldn't be jerks all the time. We shouldn't insult people all the time. We shouldn't rip people all the time. But we should rip people sometimes. And if you don't rip people sometimes, and if you don't insult people sometimes, and if you don't mock people and have harsh words for people sometimes, then you're, you're the one with the problem because you're not actually following Jesus' example. If you say kind words to people that are 
killing the flock and eating widows and, 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 and stealing from the flock and fleecing the flock and leading them astray, if you've just got nothing but kindness for them and you don't harshly rebuke them, you have the problem. You see, this is why I say it's imbalanced because this is good advice. You can't be a jerk all the time. You can't rip people all the time. Granted, completely granted, but you have to sometimes. You have to sometimes. And if you don't, you're the one that's imbalanced, not me. Okay. Number three, you aren't Jesus. Oh, I, I really, this is the one that, that really gets me. So here he goes. I've seen the meme. Perhaps you have as well. It's an artist's depiction of Christ cleansing the temple with the big white block letters reading, the next time someone tells you to be Christ-like, remind them that overturning tables is a real option. There are a number of variations of this meme out there, and it's shared textually often, textually often, contextually often, in the defense of someone's harsh demeanor and unedifying speech towards believers. The idea is that since Jesus overturned the tables and drove out money changers of the temple with a whip, verbal exoriations, I gotta look up that word. Listen, I can't be blamed for this. I went to public school. I don't know what that word means. Maybe someone in the comments could tell me. Aren't really even that bad. But the fact remains that temple cleansing first wasn't what Jesus did every day. Well, okay, spiritually speaking, perhaps it was. <laughs> you see what I mean by this article is just a mishmash? I mean, there's some helpful advice here, but there's no balance, and it doesn't do the work he wants it to do. Let's continue. But the Gospels only show him using that whip twice at the most. It's not like he kept it by his bed and got up every day looking for names to take. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you the biggest butt whooping of your life. No, like the prophet Jesus wept over his countrymen far more than he cursed them. Publicly and verbally, he longed for them to see his glory. And the normal course of his ministry was pastoral, caring for the lowly and sick, confidently teaching and storytelling, speaking words not of condemnation, for the world already stood and condemned, but out of grace." On top of that, citing the temple cleansing is a curious defense of one treating others harshly. To begin with, brothers, you aren't Jesus. Stop! Would, would you stop? This, this defense of this kind of an idea is so stupid. Brothers, we know we're not Jesus. Okay? We know. This is stupid. Stop saying this. Imagine if someone was doing something good and saying, look, I'm going to try to obey God and everything, love the Father with all my heart. I'm trying to love my neighbor as myself. And someone said, what do you think, you're Jesus? We are supposed to follow Jesus' example, all of it. That includes harsh words for people that are dangerous. That includes mocking people who need to be mocked because they're leading people astray. That includes taking down someone a few pegs that needs to be taken down a few pegs. There are times for both things. There are times to speak calmly and gently and with, and with, with, with passion, compassion for, you know, for, for, for the sinner and things like that. There are times to plead with people. There are times for that. But there are times to zing them as well. So if we're going to be Christ-like, we need to try to discern the difference between the two. And the advice in this article that I really like is it should be a balance. It should be times when you're, <laughs> when you're talking nicely to the woman at the well. But there should also be times when you're telling someone that they're a tomb. They're a whitewashed tomb. Look good on the outside, dead on the inside. There are times when you need to mock people. There, and we have to discern the difference. I'm not saying you don't be careful with that. It's not flamethrower all the time. But if we're going to be Christ-like, you need to have both. You need to have both. When someone's coming in and fleecing your flock with critical theory, it's not time to say how a one, much of a wonderful person they are and how you should listen to everything they say and all that stuff. That's not the time for it. <laughs> so, so, yes, we know you're, we're not Jesus, but you need to follow Jesus, his example, all of it, not just the kind that you like, not just the kindly, uh, the, the kindly patient kind, not just the kind that only says gracious words to people. Look, Jesus' words were always gracious, but we have to have a definition of grace and kindness that includes the possibility of mocking someone. We have to if we're going to follow Christ's example. We just have to. Here he continues. There are things that... <laughs> oh, Jared. 
is this really where we're going? This is okay. Let's just read it. There are things Christ did that we cannot and should not replicate. He died for the sins of the world. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. He died for the sins of the world. You and I can't do that. He healed the sick. You and I probably can't do that. None of us can be Jesus. Jesus was Jesus, and because of that fact, oh, Jesus was Jesus because of that fact, and his cleansing of the temple was a unique event, an apocalyptic act in a space that he owned. The temple cleansing in the context of Christ's ministry and in the inbreaking of the kingdom was an act of messianic judgment. You, you charging key denominational leaders with being George Soros-funded Marxist isn't quite the same thing. You're right, Jared. It isn't quite the same thing. Okay? So what is your point? I don't see any of the people that you're talking about making whips and cleansing the temple. Okay? We're not Jesus. Granted. I don't see any of the people you're talking about saying, oh, we can die for the sins of the world. Yeah, we can, we can heal the sick. I don't see it. I do see some of them calling some people George Soros-funded Marxists. That's true. But what's your point? It, it, is it true or is it not true? If it's not true, okay, then that's slander, right? If it's true, what's the problem with it? You see, this is what this article is. is it's it's meaningless in its main thrust. Like again, there's good advice here, but it's not good advice that I think is 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 like new to anybody. Like this is we all know this. <laughs> Everyone that's doing online ministry knows this stuff. This is true. We can't just be flamethrower all the time. <laughs> I get it. I get it. We're not Jesus. I get it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I get it. So what's the point? I, I, I just don't understand. And the thing is, like, you're not Jesus. Okay, neither was Paul. But Paul told people to cut his balls off. Cut their balls off, right? Was that, was that okay that Paul did that? Or was he open to the charge of being a, quote, jerk for Jesus? And would you, if you were in that time, written a blog article about how Paul was unloving? This is a question that we need to ask. And this is what I mean by we don't play by your rules anymore. This tries to set up a system that Jesus himself doesn't meet. If it's not a sin to mock people at times, then stop holding me to that standard. That's the, that's the point. That's the point. If Jesus won't meet your standard, your standard is nothing. It means nothing to me. Nothing. I know I won't get to speak at your conference. I get it. I don't care. I know I won't get a book deal. I don't care. You know, you know what I mean? I don't hold myself to your standard. Now, here's, here's, the, here's where it gets okay. Isn't it possible, just possible, even if not probable, that because of the deception in our own hearts that we may be more harsh than we ought to be. Jared, yes, definitely possible. Definitely possible. This is a fact I think about almost every single day. Every time I do a video, I think about my tone. I think about what's necessary. I think about what would be most effective. I think about my heart and sin against God. I think about making sure that I'm not going overboard, but also that I'm not going underboard. If that's, I don't know if that's a phrase. In other words, I'm making sure I'm not going too far. I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure I'm not going too far, but at the same time, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not, not going far enough. And so I ask you, Jared, and anyone who holds this kind of opinion, what are you doing to make sure you go far enough? And I'm not saying that you have to. I'm, you're not held to my standard. See, I wouldn't hold you to my standard. I wouldn't say, well, you need to be harsher. Otherwise, you're a wimp for Jesus. I wouldn't say that. This is a personal thing between you and God, right? I'm not making a yoke, a burden, a standard based on my own opinions for other people to use. But you can't hold me to a standard that's not biblical. There's a time for harshness and there's a time for gentle words. And we need to discern the difference between both. We cannot say that you can't be, quote, a jerk for Jesus because you're not Jesus. You can't mock. You can't say harsh words. You can't say aggressive things. You can't make a whip of cords because you're not Jesus. Okay. He continues. He says that, in fact, we, what we think is Christ-like behavior doesn't strike many as genuinely favoring the aroma of Christ. Well, I honestly, and I say this with as much 
candor as I can. Don't care if people that are dangerous to the church think that I'm being mean to them. I don't care. What I care, though, is what God thinks about what I do. And I care about what others say about me. And not, not, let, me, let me rephrase that. I care about others' opinions about what I say, and that's why I've got people in my life, people in my life that can say, look, man, maybe you crossed the line there. Maybe you crossed the line there. Maybe you should reconsider. I, I listen to people like that. I do. I do. What I won't listen, though, is when people say, well, you can't you engage in any kind of harsh words, mockery or jokes or insults or anything like that, because I know that's not biblical. So if that's what you're going to come to me with, I won't listen to that because it's not biblical. But if you come to me and say, hey, man, this is an example of where I think you crossed the line, and I think you crossed the line, here's why, I'll listen to that, man. I will. And I think all the people you're talking about probably will. Isn't it possible, he goes on, isn't it possible you're contending for the faith but are just being a jerk? That you aren't contending for the faith but are just being a jerk. I ask you, would Paul have been open to that charge? What would preventative, What would have prevented him from being open to that charge? I don't know. He said, let, let, let any of us take heed. Let, let any of us take heed we stand. Take heed we stand lest we fall. And let's remember that the Bible says too much about the danger of the tongue and the poison of anger for us to take these matter, matters lightly. And again, that's where I say that the article got good because that's true. You should all consider that in your online interaction. I need to consider that in my online interaction. And I do, and I try my best to walk a good line, to walk a line of, uh, of balance between um, you know, maybe having harsh words and maybe being more patient. I try to distinguish who I should use which strategy with, with, with which, uh, what situations I, su- I should use which strategy which, with. <laughs> I can't talk. Um, and that's the reality. But, but, but here's the thing. This is why we don't play by your rules anymore. This is why I wanted to use this article. Because th- this article attempts to set a standard for you. And it's just tempting to say, this is what Christian behavior is like, and this is what Christian behavior is not like. And it's a standard that the Bible can inform, and it does inform in some ways in, in this article. He uses Bible verses well, but it's imbalanced. Because it says we can use these Bible verses over here about being nice, but we can't use these Bible verses and these examples over here of being direct and harsh and rebuking uh, as much. Because why? The, you're not Jesus. So you can't. And honestly, that's just not a, a, a balanced view of Jesus. It's not a balanced view of Jesus. Because if Jesus would not meet your standard, then it's not a real standard that I need to worry myself about. It just isn't. If Paul, when he says, imitate me, if Paul doesn't meet your standard, then I'm sorry, I trust Paul more than I trust you. Y- you understand what I'm saying? So, so yes, we should all consider our tone. Yes, we should all consider how we engage and what we engage and who we engage and how we engage and all this stuff. But this kind of a standard, this attempt to set up a, a standard that just doesn't make any biblical sense whatsoever to use is not something that... I'm going to take seriously, and I don't think anybody should. And so that's why I say this is not helpful. We don't play by these rules anymore. Yeah, we might have to play by these rules if we want conference speaking gigs and uh, and book deals and, and uh, teaching positions and stuff like that, but we don't want that. We want to honor God, and we want to fight for God's cause, and that's what we want. And so we're going to go by God's rules, not yours. We don't play by your rules anymore. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful. God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. You know, I, I had a good time doing that video, and I think the content will be very helpful for you. If you'd like me to continue talking about this topic for this week and maybe respond to that Tim Challey's article about how to love your enemies on Twitter or whatever, uh, I'd be glad to do that. I thought that was actually a pretty decent article as well, although, again, very similarly imbalanced, which we just have to face it. Big Eva is going to be big imbalanced in that way as well. They certainly like the very lovely side of Jesus, but they don't seem to like the the zealous side of Jesus quite as much. Um, But I'm committed to liking it all. I'm committed to following the whole example, and I think you ought to be as well. Um, If you instead want me to respond to their article about rare steaks, which people have found to be really stupid, but I learned something. I mean, I, I didn't know that that red liquid wasn't blood. But any, anyway, if you wanted to respond to that, I'll do that. Or if you have another idea, please contact me. I'd be glad to, to, to take requests. I, don't, I can't promise to do every request, but I'll certainly try to do the ones that I think will be the most beneficial to the most people. But anyway, uh, God bless you. I hope you found this video helpful.
God bless.